Hey everyone, this is Kavina here, and welcome back to another video. A fractal can be colloquially defined as a self-similar shape. For example, one that contains within it multiple smaller versions of itself. Based on just a few simple rules, it can create really intricate patterns. If you come up with an interesting iterative process, it's usually pretty easy to implement it with computer code and generate some beautiful fractals. And so, that's exactly what I did. I made my own fractal, and it looks like this. I call it the Kuvina Triangle. Here's how it works. So you've probably seen Pascal's triangle. You know, the thing where you start with a 1, and then go down row by row, and to determine each new number, you just add the two above it, treating blank spaces as zeros. My fractal is very similar, but instead of adding the two numbers above, you're adding three numbers. To do this, we can rearrange the numbers from a triangular grid into a square one. Again, we start off with an empty row except for a singular one. This is row zero. Then, for each cell in the next row, we determine its number by adding the three above. So row one consists of one, one, and one. Row two consists of one, two, three, two, and one. And this process goes on and on for every row. So this is all well and good, but how is this a fractal? Well, to form the fractal, we need to change the rules of it. Instead of just adding the 3 above, we're going to take that sum and put it through the modulo operator by 4. This is the same as dividing by 4 and taking the remainder. That remainder has a cyclical pattern of 0, 1, 2, 3, and then repeats. When we calculate a few rows this way, it looks like this. Now, since we only have four possible numbers, we can assign a color to each one. In this case, zero is black, one is cyan, two is blue, and three is magenta. When you let that run for 256 generations, you end up with this. I could go on and on about all the interesting things you can notice like how every row at a power of 2 contains the pattern 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, or how blue can be found in isolation, but cyan and magenta are always found together. But I think the coolest thing has to be these black triangles. If we set all non-zero values to the same color, we can get a closer look. There are clearly patterns to the madness, like rows of 4, groups of 6, or lines of 12, but it's just so hard to predict where these patterns will show up. Despite this, every time we double the number of rows, we get the same triangle, but with higher resolution and more intricate patterns. But if you think this one is cool, just wait till you see the rest, because this fractal actually has an infinite number of siblings. This one was defined by looking at the three squares above and taking their sum mod 4. But this 4 was actually only chosen because it's my favorite whole number. In fact, we can use any whole number greater than 1. So what do those look like? Well, first we're going to have to define a color scheme that can be auto-generated for each number n. So here's how it works. 0 is always black, then for the remaining n-1, we give them different hues at evenly spaced intervals, with saturation and value set to maximum. Starting off with level 2, we get this. If these patterns look familiar, that's because they're actually the same as the isolated blue sections of level 4. And it does make some sense when you think about it, because with 2s and zeros mod 4, we're always going to be stuck with even numbers. Then we get to level 3, which looks like this. If this one is familiar, that's because it's actually very similar to another famous fractal, the Sierpinski Triangle where a triangle of emptiness divides the fractal into three copies of itself. In this one, though, you have triplets of triangles, dividing it into six copies of itself. And then this is what 4 looks like in the auto-generated color scheme. Next is level 5. You can see it starts off with a row of two triangles, then a row of 4, and a row of 6. Then there's another row of 6, but two of them are double length. After that is a row of 2 again, but the triangles are 4 times the length, and this pattern repeats with these bigger triangles, which you could just barely see down here. 
And then there's level 6, where I began to notice something. If you remove this turquoise color, corresponding to 3, the pattern of black triangles is actually the exact same as level 3. But if you remove blue and chartreuse, corresponding to 2 and 4, the pattern is identical to level 2. In other words, level 6 contains features from both levels 2 and 3. 2 and 3 are actually the factors of 6, and this is no coincidence. In fact, prime numbers always produce unique patterns of triangles, and composite numbers reflect the prime numbers that make them up. And so maybe it doesn't come as a surprise, but level 7 features another unique triangle pattern. This time, it's rows of 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, and 8 again, which is too far down, but you can see it in the smaller version. Then it repeats on a larger scale. Then there's level 8. If we eliminate the number 4, we're left with level 4's pattern. Then if we eliminate all multiples of 2, we're left with level 2's pattern. And now you can kind of see how prime patterns are represented in composite ones. In level 9, you can eliminate multiples of 3 to get level 3. In level 10, you can eliminate 5 to get level 5, or multiples of 2 to get level 2. And there's just so much that could be said about each one, but for now, I'm just going to quickly show each number up to 27, and then a few highlights after that. If you just want to get to the variant though, then feel free to skip ahead by about one and a half minutes. So I hope you enjoyed all of those, but there's actually a lot more that can be done with this idea. Instead of just using bigger and bigger numbers for the modulo operation, we can change the rule itself to something else. The first thing I thought of was instead of adding the 3 above, you add the 2 on the sides, but subtract the 1 in the middle. We can repeat this with every level of the original to get what I like to call the shadow version of it. But surprisingly, this actually barely changes anything. In fact, the shadow version of 2 is no different than the original. For the rest, the shadow versions are just like the originals, but with slightly different color schemes. Which I think is pretty remarkable, considering that one of the numbers is literally doing the opposite of its original purpose. So we've tried adding the one in the middle and subtracting it, but what about ignoring it and just using the sum of the other two? This actually has the same effect as a spaced out Pascal's triangle. That can still produce very interesting results though, so let's take a look at those. Since Pascal's triangle can be used for binomial expansion, I'm going to call these ones the bi versions. So bi2 is actually just the Sierpinski triangle. Not a weird version of it, but just the original. Then bi3 is actually the same basic pattern as the original level 3, just scaled differently. By 4 is just by 2 added onto itself, since 4 is 2 times 2. Then by 5 goes back to the basics again, 
dividing itself into 15 smaller copies of itself, arranged in a triangle with length 5. That's because 15 is actually the fifth triangle number. By 6 is actually pretty similar to the original level 6, because you can eliminate 3 to get by 3, or eliminate 2 and 4 to get by 2. Then by 7 divides itself into 28 copies, because 28 is the 7th triangle number. And at this point, you can see the pattern. Prime numbers divide themselves into smaller copies, arranged in a triangle, while composite numbers are just combinations of their component factors, just like the original fractals. So these were made by ignoring the number in the middle, but what if instead we ignore the one on the right? Well, I'm going to call these the bi-skew versions, because it's just the bi versions, but skewed to the right. But now let's go back to the subtracting idea for a bit, which gave us the shadow versions. What if we add the ones on the left and in the middle, but subtract the one on the right? Does it make another skewed triangle? Actually, no, it doesn't. Instead, it's barely different than the originals. Or at least it's what I thought, because the first ones I tried were Shadow Skew 4 and 2. But then I got to Shadow Skew 3. For whatever reason, it actually makes a completely unique and never before seen pattern. And then Shadow Skew 5 ends up looking like by 5. Shadow Skew 6 shows us that these ones do continue the tradition of composite numbers reflecting patterns from their factors. But then Shadow Skew 7 has another new pattern. It's very similar to regular level 7, but has slightly different triangle placement. And the same thing keeps happening with all the shadow skew triangles. Out of all the variants, I think the shadow skew variation has to be the most mysterious type. My next idea was the following. Before the modula operator, just add one. I've decided to call these the psychedelic versions for reasons that will become apparent. This is a very simple change, but it has huge consequences, because now, non-zero values can appear even when the three squares above are all zero. Starting at level two, it looks like this. Instead of black voids, we're left with black and red stripes. Then there's level three, where instead of black, we just have solid red. At level four, we're back to the red and black stripes again, but then level five is where it gets crazy. The black voids are replaced with a cycle of four colors, and at this point, you can begin to understand why I call these ones the psychedelic versions. And the psychedelic theme continues for all numbers except for powers of three. But it gets even better. Just like the originals, each psychedelic triangle has its own shadow version, where we subtract the one in the middle instead of adding it. Again, level 2 is the same, but then level 3 actually has a cycle of 3 stripes this time. Level 4 now has a cycle of 4, and 5 has 5. And I think you can see where this is going, because by level 7, you can clearly see that we get a beautiful rainbow forming. And it just gets better and better as we keep going. And if we set it to something like 107, then we can see the spectrum in its full glory. And then there's one final idea that I had. Instead of adding the three numbers, what if you multiply them? This idea is very simple, but it's hard to get it to work. Since the top row is all zeros except for one, the next row will just be completely zeros. To fix this, you can make it start with three in a row, but even still, it just dies out. If you want to get actual patterns, you have to start with three in a row and make the rule be multiplying them and then adding one and this finally produces the product versions. They can be pretty hard to look at, so to combat this, I've only done 64 generations for each one. Level 2 just has a striped background and a vertical line in the middle. Then level 3 has two lines, forming a capital letter lambda, and the stripes are offset within the narrow triangle it forms. 4 is 2 times 2, so level 4 is just a fancy vertical line in the middle. Then level 5 starts off promising, but then it just dies off, which is honestly pretty sad. Level 6 is 2 times 3, so it has the narrow triangle from 3, and a line in the middle from 2. 
Then level 7 has a solid background for once, and it goes back to a wide triangle, much like the original fractals. Level 8 is 2 cubed, so it's just a fancy vertical line. Level 9 is 3 squared, so it has a fancy capital lambda. Level 10 is 2 times 5, so it dies off like level 5, but still retains the line from level 2. And then level 11 makes this interesting pine tree looking pattern. And they basically continue with the same rules as always. Prime numbers make original patterns, and composite numbers reflect the patterns of their factors. So I'll just show a few highlights. Level 30 has RGB stripes with a rainbow line in the middle. And level 48 is basically the opposite, with pan-colored stripes and an RGB line in the middle. Then level 67, we finally have a solid background again. 102 makes this beautiful rainbow, and 103 has a solid background. Then 222 has this weird divided rainbow, and 223 is back to a solid color again. And I do realize that for these last few, I've been focusing on the backgrounds more so than the actual triangles, but often in math, the most interesting things are found when you're not looking for them. And I think that's an important lesson to learn, and a good way to invent your own fractals. You come up with an interesting process, and then keep modifying it, and just see where it takes you. You'll probably be surprised by the results. This whole idea has an infinite number of potential variations, but those are all the ones I have for today. And now I leave you with a question. Which variation, and which specific level, was your favorite? Tell me in the comments. I value comments a lot, so I would really appreciate it. Also, subscribe to the channel and watch my other videos, because I have some exciting stuff planned that you won't want to miss. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.